Hi, my name is Derek Owusu, um, and I'm a writer and poet passionate about men's mental health. My experience of COVID um, as a black man, as a, as a writer, as an artist during this period was, um, the, the first lockdown was very difficult. It was very hard. Um, it was hard to write. It was hard to read. Um, it was just hard to focus on anything. It's hard to, to, to work. I was working from home. Again, as everybody, some, everybody says, it's not working from home. It's living at work. So it was very, very, uh, it was very difficult. And just kind of looking around and, you know, spending time on social media, Instagram and Twitter, you know, you, it was very obvious that a lot of people were, were, were suffering, suffering during that time. And then obviously when the reports started coming out that COVID is affecting, you know, uh, um, black minority ethnics disproportionately compared to um, other people in the UK, it just kind of, you know, got you down more. You became a lot more scared. You became more terrified for your, your older family members. I was really scared for my mom, who, who they're now calling a key worker. Um, you know, her waking up at 4.30 in the morning to go, go and clean offices and things like that. And she had to do it because otherwise, where, where was, was the income going to come from? Um, so that was, that, was, that was quite terrifying. So it obviously had a, a huge effect on me. And because these kind of feelings were all self-centered, they were, you know, I was really thinking about my, myself and how I would feel if something happened to my mom, you know, how I would feel with these kind of things. I think a, a liberating moment for me was after the first lockdown lifted a little bit. And I was just standing in a, um, a friend's kitchen and suddenly the feelings that I had that were towards myself about concerns about my mother, especially, went outwards. And I was thinking, how would she, how does she feel? I really started thinking about her and I just really felt like, oh, I really, really love my mom. And in that moment, there was just a spark and suddenly I knew I could write again. And I had a drink in my hand, I put down the drink, I have a gin and tonic, I put the gin and tonic down, I was like, listen, I've got to go. I'm going to go home, I've got something I need to write literally just got an Uber, went back home, and I just started writing my new book. When it comes to the kind of the, um, the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that was going on in response to the murder of George Floyd, you know, in terms of especially in my industry, you know, people who are putting out book lists of black authors to read and support these, these black writers and putting up black squares and, and, and those kind of things, you know, I was kind of, because again, I was trying to preserve my own sanity. I wasn't checking social media updates and the news outlets too, too much, but I, I couldn't help but see these things. I started thinking, you know, wow, this, this might be a turning point. People, it, it seems like people are starting to, to wake up um, and I, though I wasn't really sure how supporting black writers and buying their books was going to help anything that might be my ignorance, but I just couldn't make the connection in terms of us trying to, you know, get rid of police brutality. I guess they, I guess people felt like, okay, if they're reading books about race and stuff like that, it would give us perspective. And, but if I'm being completely right, I don't think people need to read a book in order to understand that you should treat human beings like human beings. Um, so all, all of the reading that they're doing is, I, I personally feel like it's, it's, it's useless if the foundation isn't already there. And if you feel like you need to read those books in order to treat people with respect and dignity, the foundation isn't there. So you shouldn't be reading them, you know, in the first place. Um, that, that might be a bit harsh, but I was, you know, it was, it was frustrating to see, especially with the black squares. I just didn't get it. You know, I don't really understand certain social media protests. I know that social media is instrumental in bringing down, has been instrumental in bringing down particular kind of powers in, in, um, in the world and whatnot, but I just really couldn't get my head around it. And I think what was the real turning point for me was that I just thought it, it allowed me to focus my thoughts and try to and understand what the real problem is here. You know, what I really, really need to be doing, what I need to be doing with um, my writing, the kind of jobs that I take on. Um, and it just made me realize that, you know, I can't, I can't be complacent. Complacency is, compl is, is being complicit, you know, and 
I guess me scrutinizing everybody, feeling like, what's this doing? What's this doing? Again, made me turn that on myself. Derek, what are you doing, though? You're sitting here saying that, oh, social media, blah, 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 but you ain't doing anything. So it made me really realize that, okay, I need to sort myself out and, and, and get serious about this. When lockdown first started, things were difficult for me. You know, I was, I was in my room a lot. I was drinking way too much because it was just time to do that. Do you know what I mean? I think what work really did for me when I was going through hard times was it gave me a long period of time where I couldn't touch alcohol or any, any kind of substance. I, I just had to work. Do you know what I mean? With that gone, there was no excuse. So I was, I was doing a lot of that. And I think with, with COVID and being scared for myself and for other people and then, you know, with the the murder of George Floyd and just being surrounded by so much death and, and sadness and grief and stuff like that. You know, I just kind of thought, I want to live, you know, I want to live. And I just became kind of obsessed with thinking about the possible ways that I wouldn't be able to do that. And then I wanted to remedy those. So I thought, okay, got to cut down on the drinking. Boom. I've got to start exercises again. Boom. I've got to stop eating McDonald's breakfast in my bed in the morning. Go on. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've got to try and get healthy. And um, and again, even with, with therapy, you know, I started doing something called dialectical behavioral therapy. I've done two courses of that now as well, you know, and I'm just really trying to work on myself because if I'm not well and healthy, I can't help anybody else. Um, so it's got, it starts with me and then I can go outwards, as, as I've been saying. You know, it's going to sound quite cynical, but it's just made me realize, you know, the world we're living in is in an absolute mess. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. There's a lot of things that need to change. Um, and I think it was important for me to kind of see that and, and, and really, really acknowledge it. Sometimes you know something, you know, but you don't think about it enough to, it becomes your reality. Keep in the back of your mind, oh yeah, I know, but do you really understand it? And that's, that's what's happened with me. Um, with, you know, in terms of governments and just people and just how, how selfish some people can be as well. Those kind of things, how paranoid a lot of people are, you know, within, and they have reason to be paranoid because of the way things have happened in the world for a long period of time. So yeah, it made me realize that there's, yeah, we have a lot of work to do, um, you know, and the fact that I even, I'm trying to be healthier and live longer in this world means that I haven't completely lost faith in it. Now I'll be reading an extract from my novel in verse that reminds me, which was published in 2019 by Murky Books. Um, what I'll be reading is the, the, four, the fourth part of a four part series um, of prose poems. And I felt like this was, was apt just because it relates to um, the riots that took place in Tottenham after the murder of Mark Duggan. We are the police. I felt like Orwell, Owen or Olsen standing on the sidelines and reporting, each update seconds apart. No profession persuaded me, capturing everything, every bottle thrown, every car set alight, every female officer toppled by a miscalculated baton swing resulting in opportunistic nikes attempting to stomp her out. I broadcast to another world, my Twitter feed, my daily planet, the place to dump news like leftover thoughts. I was on the train home when the announcement of Hackney Downs reminded me of the London ember gaining air. The riots reaching disconnected regions making up the body of the news. I ran down the station stairs focused on the fray, taking back roads and sliding under police tape. But the scene took me back. I was my father in 85, seeing so many losing their heads. I stood watching video game obsessed teens trying to throw molotovs but only managing mojitos, a baby screaming above fire licking windows, trencherman flames eating up the curtains, and a boy, maybe 14, bleeding from, bleeding from his shin because the excitement forced his foot through a glass window that didn't shatter but broke in half. I put my phone down. The novel I was threading suddenly revealing itself as true crime. I shook off the stupor joined in with the screams to save the baby and began to help the boy. My experience of COVID-19 matters. <laughs>